I didn't. I thought I was more Malcolm X, but I find out I'm more MLK because as I'm getting hosed down every day by the press and financially, I'm just standing there. And when when I found out that they tried to put me in jail, it was like a dog was biting my arm, and I I I, I almost shed a tear, almost. But I still walked in stride through it. Yeah, I, I think I think they've been extremely unfair to you. I think. Who was they though? We can't Cor- say who they Cor- is. Corporate can we? press. I'm not using the. I don't, I don't use the word as the, as the way I guess you, you guys use. I'm, I'm talking. It is about, them though, isn't it? I mean, because <laughs> no. it, it, because when you think <laughs> about not. it, consider it. In 2018. What do you mean it's not? It, what What do I mean? Like, uh, uh, okay, so how about? Are you leaving? Are you afraid of the press? He's gone. I'll say it right now. Um, you guys, I, I, you guys want to bring that stuff up? And then have think the we're discussion. not going to have a, have like, a conversation. Like have the discussion. Like you, you think but, yeah, he's going to come in here and say, "Here's my pain, here's my suffering." I'm going to say, "I hear you." And then he's going to say, "And it was Jewish people." And I'm going to be like, "Okay, but don't you consider?" So I'm not going to do this. I, I, I refuse. Go, uh, make sure he's cool. All right, go for it. Luke and I will have a conversation. You just watched Kanye West storm off of Tim Pool's show after Tim Pool thought that it was a good idea to platform not only him, but also two of his friends, one of which being Holocaust-denying Nazi Nick Fuentes and pedophile defender Milo Yiannopoulos. Now, during the live stream, you can see that Tim Pool's audience was posting L's since Tim Pool refused to go along with Kanye West's anti-Semitism. And shout out to Dr. Heem who shared this video, by the way. And I've just got to point out that this is the audience that so-called centrist Tim Pool has cultivated, where your own viewers are criticizing you and calling you out because you refuse to say anti-Semitic things, to go along with Kanye West's anti-Semitism. So yeah, maybe this is your indication that you should reverse course, but he's not going to do that. But more on Tim Pool later. So Kanye West, basically, it wasn't a very long interview. It was about less than 20 minutes, give or take. But the second he opened his mouth, predictably, he began to spew vile anti-Semitism. I just got to go right to the heart of this anti-Semite claim that's happening. This is something, if you read the definition, it, it says you can't claim that there's multiple people inside of banks or in media that are all Jewish or you're anti-Semitic. And that's the truth. Like, it's the truth. What are we talking about? And what, 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 elaborate. what do you mean? You mean? I'm saying like I've been labeled anti-Semite, right? So there's there's different beliefs about our our bloodlines, you know, like the documentary that Kyrie posted. And in general, America has been left ignorant and history has been changed. So when we start questioning things that question the indoctrination, then you immediately get, you know, um, you said debanked or de- what did you say happened to you or demonetized, deplatformed. De- yeah, demonized, demonetized. And what's so beautiful about this time is everyone got to see what's really been happening. And now we can really understand. We can see that Ron Emanuel was right next to Obama and then Jared Kushner was right next to Trump. Da-da. But so, you, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're getting right into it, I guess, right? I was, I was hoping to go for the news first before we got into all of this stuff. Uh, I, think, I think the issue is, uh, one way to put it, is you're a- a- expounding upon a localization issue that you've witnessed, right? Let, let me let me clarify. There are a handful of people that you see are Jewish in a certain place, and then you associate Judaism with the power. As a, whereas I view that as not relevant to it. Like, yeah, you're substantially more powerful than I am, but I don't view what you're doing as an issue of black people. Yeah, but have you ever heard the term the black vote? So it's okay to put us in one net, but it's not okay for me to put them in one net. Yeah, but I mean, 
That's the basis I, I, of the hypocrisy that people have been <laughs> have been thinking about and knowing about and realizing for decades. We were all wondering how this dam was going to break. Everybody in the country was wondering, what, what is the root of this hypocrisy? Why can people talk about white people a certain way? Why can't they talk about that group a certain way? And uh, the, the, the most the, the, the wretched and wicked and oppressive prevailing orthodoxy of uh, cancel culture, well, it turned out that the one thing that was going to break the dam was the biggest star in the world, and it took the biggest star in the world to do it. In other words, everyone now knows for sure that Jewish people control everything because Kanye West proved that. The evidence being that he said anti-Semitic things and was subsequently canceled, for lack of a better word, for saying anti-Semitic things. So that's that's proof. No, it's not Jewish people that got you canceled, Kanye West. It's you who got yourself canceled. I, for one, am not Jewish, but I'm canceling you, I guess. I don't want to listen to your music. I used to be a fan, but I can't support hate. I can't support vile anti-Semitism, and I don't support you. Now, every time Kanye West opened his mouth, as I alluded to earlier, he couldn't help himself. It was like anti-Semitic word vomit, case in point. But when I would work on homeless shelters and ideas, I'd have a contractor. We won't say what race. Um, <laughs> and ridiculous now he later goes on to explain in this long and meandering story that essentially he owes back taxes and found out that he might go to jail because of that this morning and because of said back taxes that he owes and potential jail time well this is jewish people who are doing that to him apparently now of course the way that he explained this made no sense whatsoever but essentially kanye west at this point is the personification of that meme of the guy who's throwing the stick in between his bicycle spokes uh, falling over and then saying damn why did blank make me do this in this instance it's kanye west with jewish people any bad thing that has ever happened to him ever is specifically the result of jewish people that's actually what he believes now this isn't surprising because kanye west has made it abundantly clear that he is a vile bigot so the question is why would a self-proclaimed centrist like tim pole choose to platform someone with vile views knowing that he could help to popularize and mainstream these beliefs and it's not it's not just kanye west to be clear who he's platforming he's platforming nick fuentes and milo yiannopoulos as well so tim pole we know why he's doing this, right? It's obviously for the clicks. It's for the views. In fact, before this stream went live, he hyped it up on Twitter, tweeting out this photo with the caption tonight. And he was also trending on Twitter. So he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows why he did this. And to his credit, he does push back against Kanye West throughout the duration of this interview. But still, platforming Kanye West you know that this is a bad idea. In fact, he admits that other right-wingers told him that this was a bad idea, but he did it anyway. And listen to the excuse that he uses. Before the show, obviously, I'm getting a bunch of messages from people. People are hitting me up and they're like, you shouldn't host them. They're anti-Semitic. They're right supremacists. They're racist. I do find the idea, uh, I do find it funny or weird or whatever that, you know, Nick, they call you a white supremacist. You're here working with or for, you know, one of the most powerful black men, one of the wealthiest and most famous. But, uh, a lot of people were saying on the right specifically don't platform them mm -hmm. and i said well i want to i want to understand what they're thinking and why they're thinking it they're part of they're involved in what may be the biggest news story of the past week and we have an opportunity to sit down and, and talk because the them. red media controls both sides it just said it as simple as possible jerry kushner was next to trump ron emmanuel was next to obama and that right there tim is why your right-wing friends who warned you that this was a bad idea were proven correct you knew what you were platforming you knew what you were getting yourself into, but you decided to prioritize views and clicks over the impact that you could have on society. And um, yeah, here we are. And he actually said during his defense for platforming these folks that um, people are claiming that Nick Fuentes is a white supremacist, but how can he be a white supremacist if he's here with a black man? He's literally using the I can't be racist, I have black friends defense on Nick Fuentes' behalf when Nick Fuentes didn't even ask him to defend him, but I mean, he's going out of his way to defend a white supremacist. And I'm sorry, I've got to touch on him platforming Milo Yiannopoulos earlier on in the episode, and I did watch all of it, by the way. Milo Yiannopoulos alluded to the fact that he was also on Tim Pool's program, not that that long ago and it's interesting because last week i thought that tim pool was really concerned about groomers he claimed that club q that was shot up 
hosted a grooming event, and then when people explained to him how this was a lie that was harmful, he laughed it off and doubled down. But yet, for views and clicks, Tim Pool decided to bring on an actual groomer, or at least someone who defends grooming and outright pedophilia. Let me remind you about who Milo Yiannopoulos is. The New York Times explained in a 2017 article, quote, no, 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 you're misunderstanding what pedophilia means, Mr. Yiannopoulos says on the tape in which he is talking to radio hosts in a video chat. Quote, pedophilia is not a sexual attraction to somebody 13 years old who is sexually mature. Pedophilia is attraction to children who have not reached puberty, he adds, dismissing the fact that 13-year-olds are children. The notion of consent, he says, is arbitrary and oppressive. At one one point in the video, an unknown speaker says that the behavior being defended by Mr. Yiannopoulos is akin to molestation by Catholic priests. Mr. Yiannopoulos responds in an ironic tone by crediting a priest for having helped develop his sexual technique. Hey Tim, there's the groomer that you and your right-wing buddies have been so concerned about. He's right there on your program. He explicitly defended pedophilia. And you're just okay with that? You're okay with platforming this person and rehabilitating his career after he was rightfully canceled for defending pedophilia? You're helping to resurrect the career of Milo Yiannopoulos, but yet you had no problem claiming that the LGBTQ plus nightclub, which was shot up, hosted a grooming event with no evidence that there was grooming or sexual molestation going on. But yet you have no problem benefiting off of an actual defender of pedophilia if it leads to you getting views and clicks. It's just genuinely despicable. And the reason why I think that so many people, Tim, were frustrated by your tweets and your whole anti-groomer rant is because you should know better. Everyone knows that you're not a centrist, but you at least are seemingly more reasonable than other right-wing propagandists. You know that not all queer people are groomers. You know that the grooming bullshit by the GOP is fabricated, but yet you played along with it. All because you know who your audience is. You know that that's what your audience wants to hear, so you're giving them what they want for views and clicks. So people were disappointed in you because we expected better of you, myself included. But I guess that that is, just makes me naive. But I mean, this is now what Tim Pool is doing, platforming vile anti-Semites, including Holocaust denying white supremacists and pedophile defenders, all so he can get his name out there, all for clicks and clout. And it's despicable, but this is the climate in the United States media, uh, where if you do good work, you really don't get recognized. But if you, um, you know, you platform somebody who is going to give you views and clicks, then that's your ticket to success. It's truly gross, but this sort of thing is incentivized. The more disgusting, egregious person that you bring on, the more eyeballs that you'll draw to the screen. So that's where we're at. You know, I'm not surprised that Kanye West said anti-Semitic things on Tim Pool's show, but it's just, we should really look at the people who are choosing to continue to platform Kanye West and give him the microphone after they know exactly what to expect from him at this point. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralists, woke moralists, woke moralists. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.